Hey everybody, Tim back again. So, um, yeah, um, finding time to do another one. Who, who knew, right? So, um, I'm going to be playing around with camera angles, so I'm not quite sure what's going to work, what's not. So, um, but this is working well for at least for me tonight uh, because i got a big stack of vinyl. And the reason being is that I want to throw my hat in support of Chris over at Chris Has The Spins, a newer VC channel. Um, really starting to come come into his own and really been enjoying what I was seeing. You know, appreciate you reaching out and I'm glad I, I'm glad I checked you out. Really, really love your content, Chris. So he decided to have a no subs contest. Why not? You know, you can, you know, it's your channel. You can do it as, as you wish. And I applaud for trying to get your name out there. And I think this is a really fun way to do it. Um, so he's asked us some questions on covers. Not like, you know, somebody covered somebody else, the actual sleeves. So that's why I have a big stack. I have a big list. It's 20 questions. And um, unfortunately, my brain, not so good anymore. So without further, further ado, I can't even talk. That's how tired I am from everything. So anyway, um, let's get started. So an album cover that you yourself or your family or loved ones would like to recreate. Well, I kind of took this one on the nose and I thought it'd be fun because my entire family are huge fans of this movie and it would be just cool to kind of have a picture of us like this. Oh, Blair. That's the uh, Dress World Fallen Kingdom soundtrack. And it would just be cool to have us down there kind of looking up at the at the T-Rex and going, oh shit. <laughs> so, um, when I brought this home, my, my little one, Oliver, was super stoked. So, ah, the thing, yeah. So, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep going again in my notes because I'm, I'm horrible. An album cover that makes you happy. Twofold on this one. This is DJ Shadow's uh, debut LP introducing. First off, who wouldn't want to be there, right? That doesn't make you happy, then why are we all here in a VC? But this album just holds a lot of personal memories to me and personal satisfaction and got me through a lot. So um, when I see this, I just get happy. Mainly because wouldn't you want to be there right now? I, would, I know I would. Album cover that makes you sad. So if you're not familiar with Jay Dillo, I will give you the short, 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 short version. Hip hop producer really started to come into his own and unfortunately was diagnosed with a very rare blood disorder. And he died soon after making this album. In fact, Dilla made this album, Donuts, exclusively from 45s that he was sampling on a portable turntable in the hospital and basically working his magic on his deathbed. I can't help but think what that's like to try to die empty, so to speak. The album has 31 tracks because he was 31 years old. Fantastic album. Don't let that, you know, the downer kind of kind of kill it. This is an amazing album, but when I when I think of the backstory, it gets me. A sexy album cover. I, I don't know what else needs to be said. So I won't. Oh, excuse me, my handwriting is horrible. A boring album cover. I'm gonna catch so much flack right now. I get it. The music was supposed to make a statement. It was artistic in their own mind. But damn it, every other cover being given us was amazing. Sorry. If you haven't guessed it, it is the White Album. 
being a smartass. An album cover where everyone is dressed to impress. You know, there's a, maybe the band, maybe a member. This one, as soon as I heard the question, I knew which one I was born. Look at these fly individuals right here. So, this is New Edition's Any Heartbreak, right when they kind of reinvented themselves. You know, they were the group Candy Girl, you know, and, you know, just, there was just, there was a lot of bubblegum pop-ish feeling with them. Then they added a new member, and that was Johnny Gill. And Johnny Gill had pipes. These guys could sing, but Johnny was in a more soulful lane. And this really turned into a, a monster of an album for them and kind of allowed them to shed that little boy image, so to speak. Um, so, you know, Bobby Brown's gone, J Johnny Gill's in, and it's just a killer of an album. So. Um, a female fronted band cover. Come on, focus. Get with me. Hello. There you go. It's like it's like I'm on the SCTV skits in the back. Like, Ooh. I mean, Chrissy Hine, right? We don't need to say anything else. We agree. Kick ass band. Kick ass female. Kick ass front person of a band, I mean, you know, front woman, I don't know, that's just bullshit, you know, she led this band to great heights, hell of a voice, great songwriter, it's a kick-ass band, that's what I want with. An album of a favorite box set cover, if you know me, and you've watched my channel for more than three videos, So this is what the proposed cover that Hendrix sent in was supposed to be for Electric Ladyland, taken by Linda Eastman. Yes, Linda McCartney, that Linda Eastman. He loved the cover, he loved the, the kids, the innocence, and this is what he wanted to be the cover. Track, in their infinite wisdom in the UK, chose the Naked Ladies, which he never liked. The, U, the U.S. one with the painting. I still think this is the best. And if you don't have this box set and you are a Hendrix fan, go get it. It's amazing. Really, really good. The live show has some issues. Anyway. An album not very many people own, but probably should. And I've shown this recently, and this is kind of a little bit of a caveat on this. Um, and this is Uncle, and their first outing science fiction. Now, Uncle was the mastermind of James Lavelle, who created the Moax label. But a lot of the, the nuts and bolts were done by DJ Shadow. But what's amazing about this album is that this really bridged the sampled music era with incredible singer-songwriter performances. Um, Richard Richard Ashcroft, if memory's right, uh, Tom York, uh, Mike D had an appearance on it. Um, and with one track, Jason Newstead played bass. I mean, this was just literally the idea behind Uncle was production and guest appearances. And no other Uncle album could come close to the level of the depth that this one had. If you like 90s alternative, go give this a listen. It's going to have something for everybody. Sorry. An album cover with great artwork. I mean, come on, guys. You know I'm a Hendrix fan. Really? I could have done this all for Hendrix. Do we really have to acknowledge that? This this album cover is just... I mean, yes, it's iconic. 
but it is just it's awesome this is actually the um, experience Hendrix family reissue of this album and if you are missing anything in your Hendrix catalog and it is pressed on that Sony Legacy Experience Hendrix footprint, get it. The remasterings are phenomenal. The quality of the pressings are top notch. Um, this is coming from a Hendrix fanatic. Get it. A psych album. I'm a fever treat. Very accessible. Probably on your, I'd say like lower tier psych. But it's a great album. Um, it's a great introduction to Psych. It's not overly like extremely weird Psych. That some of that stuff can get to, which I kind of like. Which is weird because I like that, but I'm not too big in the uh, free jazz. Do the math on that one. Um, but no, this is a good starter tier level one intro uh, to Psych Rock, and definitely recommend it. Fever Tree. The blues album. I gotta admit, I don't have a lot of blues. But I did pull some John Mayall. This is um, a banquet of blues. This was actually recorded in 1976. Um, nice little promo there. Um, decent stuff, you know, and I itself admittedly need to get more blues. Um, it just seems like it's always lower on my totem pole when I go, when I go digging. So. Uh, jazz record. Now, I have been buying, trying to buy more jazz um, and explore that, that genre, that lane more and more. Um, I swear when I go shopping, I need to have some people on speed dial, so I just be like, well, what should I buy? Because um, I like what I like, you know. Um, I'm finding that the, the hard bop, the fusion, that's, that's my lane, and, and I'm probably going to stick with it. So I could have pulled Coltrane or Davis, and, you know, I mean, no one can dispute that. But there's a third from that era that I think it's overlooked. And not really overlooked in the sense that, like, you know, isn't a top A performer because he's played on some great stuff, but he's got some iconic albums. And this is one of them. This is Cannonball and Adderley's Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. This is a just a phenomenal front to back. Um, obviously, the, his big hit, Mercy, 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 is on there. Um, but just, just quality stuff. And look for that name on the production, David Axelrod. He he produces great jazz. He produced uh, some some like garage psych stuff as well. Phenomenal. So and he's had some good couple good albums of his own too. Uh, a soul record, man. You know, I've got a bunch of it back there. Some of it I haven't even shown. So I went with that. What have I not shown? I haven't shown any Pendergrass. Love me some Teddy. I mean, just... I, his voice to me, even though a little bit... I, hate to say, I don't want to use the word forceful. He wasn't a tender singer as much. He used his power. Um, but man, he had pipes. And one of the highlights for me at Live Aid was when Ashford and Simpson brought him out in a wheelchair to let the world know he still had his pipes. It was hard. It was hard for him. It was hard for us. But, I mean, just to see an overwhelmingly positive response to his accident and how we were all pulling for him. You know, we, unfortunately, it didn't, didn't quite go well, but, you know, what a voice. An album cover that you think has not been seen. So my five-year-old drew me an album cover. He actually did. He just grabbed all my sniffers and said he was going to draw me an album cover. <laughs> I just thought it was fun to show that off. Um, this one, I went actually with a bootleg. And uh, this is ACDC, which I think is funny because it's like ACD, ADC, I don't know. It's called Tripwires. So um, I know the bootleg circuits, you know, tough to find some stuff or what have you so um 
I just thought this was, you know, probably one a lot of people haven't seen. Decent, I uh, wouldn't say it's it's one of the better ACDC boots I've heard, but it does have some good stuff on there, and I enjoyed spending it. Um, album with a dream guitar. I'm as much as I love guitarists and guitar driven rock and, and new music I don't follow like you know who plays what um, my unfortunately my brain only has so much capacity and that's just one of the ones that never really hit but looking who wouldn't want that I mean that's history right there right I mean that's just phenomenal stuff Every time I see one of these guitars in hard rock or whatever, I'm like, hand me a brick. I'm running. Just want to touch one. Of course, I had to go with the Hendrix guitar. It says a Hendrix channel. I mean, I'm surprised I don't have a Hendrix tattooed on my back. Or do I? Ah. <sighs> I just realized I missed one. Oh, please. Okay, I'm back. Thankfully, you didn't have to witness the painful hobble of me walking over there to get, a, to get this because I was dumb enough to miss one of the questions. We're playing with pain, folks. One take. An iconic album cover. Man, well, we have so many, right? You know, you think, I mean, hell, anything hypnosis did with Pink Floyd. <laughs> Forget it. It's iconic. King Crimson. That came to mind. Or this. So, Value Vinyl, Steve, um, was gracious enough to send this to me. Uh, big want of mine. You know, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest Stones fan. But, I do enjoy a good Stones record. And this one, obviously, is probably their most psychedelic Um and I just absolutely enjoyed the hell out of spinning this one. Um, it's a placeholder. I will probably eventually upgrade it. Um, but for now, I can listen to it whenever the hell I want to. So, Steve, thank you so much. Uh, their Satanic Majesty's request comes from you. A favorite gatefold. I haven't showed this one in a while. Uh, and when I did, it, uh, a lot of people were taken back by the cover. Just thought it was really cool. This one, um, this one's been pretty iconic for me. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge hip hop fan, as a lot of people know, and uh, this one has a great sample on it. It's just a great song all around. It's called It's a New Day by the Skull Snaps. And if you looked at this album cover, just flipping through, you would not guess that this is like some hardcore soul slash funk stuff. So it gets cool, but then it gets even cooler. That game fold is just so badass. So the drum break on It's a New Day has been sampled by ridiculous amounts. Um, I know uh, it actually got its start, to my knowledge, uh, not the be all end all, but there was. Uh, there was a, a kind of amateurish producer and dancer who turned MC. His name was Steezo. Um, he did a song called It's My Turn. And he sampled It's a New Day, the drum break at the very beginning. And he did it so clean that people just started sampling that. They didn't know where he got the drum break from. The diggers finally kind of, as they're flipping through it, are like, what's this? And, ah, okay, so it didn't take them long to make the connection. But his sample was so clean and so pure. They just said, hell with it, we'll get that. Um, and I think he knew he was onto something because even in the first verse, he even had the line using the confusing beats that you never heard. Um, so because of that, this album came to the forefront and it's been repressed a bunch of times and I absolutely love the entire album. It's a great, like I said, it's a great soul song. Your oldest album. Now I actually had three that came out this year. I had a Dave Brubeck album, 
spot that I almost pulled for like you know the sexy album cover because it was you know people in their 50s dressed up and going out and having a good time um, Bing Crosby's White Christmas but I'm also a sucker for Rhapsody in Blue and I, was, I didn't really, really like classical or anything in this one so I mean not like classical classical but you know what I mean um, so this is uh this is Levant plays Gershwin, and I'm a sucker for Rhapsody in Blue. I mean, I see it, especially if it's like a buck or two, I'm grabbing it. I just, I just love that. It's a, an iconic performance, a piece for me. And then um, it says your oddest or most obscure album cover. I don't know if I really have a most obscure. I've actually shown this before, but it's somebody that doesn't get seen a lot in the VC. That's Buddy Miles. So this is the Buddy Miles Express. I mean, <laughs> how can you not love that cover? Um, and with a name of Booger Bear. And it's pretty damn funky. So, uh, if you don't know Buddy Miles, he was the um, second drummer for Jimi Hendrix. He was more on the ilk of the uh, band of Gypsies. He did play a little bit of the experience stuff, but you know, as, as they were moving away, as Jimmy was moving away from that sound, he kind of was more involved in that 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 second wave of, of Jimmy's music, um, which unfortunately didn't get explored a lot before he passed. Uh, but then Buddy went on to a, a wonderful career of his own. Um, he off, he actually authored the song "Them Changes." He's done some great covers on his albums. Um, highly recommend checking them out. You can find find them pretty cheap too. So. So that's it. I tried to do 20 album covers in 20 minutes and I fell short by a couple, but I tried. So, um, Chris, you have an awesome channel and I look forward to uh, continuing to get to know you and your collection. Uh, just continue great work, you know, fantastic. Uh, honored to be able to jump in and support your channel. So, um, you know my drill. If you don't know Chris, there will be a link to his channel below. Go give him some love. Um, you know, he started this, this whole process and he didn't have very many subs. I think he's over a hundred. So congratulations, kudos, fantastic job. Um, but it's all about the music and the personality and, and Chris has that. So, um, go give him a check out, please. You know, he's, a, he's good people. Everybody take care. We'll talk soon. Peace.